George Chevalo from, from Toronto. He always said, anything can happen in two guys put on boxing gloves. And, uh, I, I know that I'm a journeyman. I know that I've uh, never been a, a Reddick Bo or, or a Lennox Lewis or these type of characters or a Larry Holmes. But uh, I've given Dokes everything he could handle on a, on a week's notice. I give Tommy the Duke Morrison everything he could handle on a week's notice. And uh, I mean, the odd times they've gotten me out of there. I'll, I'll agree to that. You know, you get caught with a punch. But uh, on, on most of the times, I come and, and try my best, and like I said, I've got a puncher's chance, and I'm, I'm not going to go out and say that I'm going to knock Larry Holmes out, but I'm going to go out there uh, tonight and try and be stubborn. Well, the 37-year-old Lacusta, this is the last big roll of the dice, and he knows what he's getting into against Larry Holmes. I think that he possesses the most heart of anybody, so right off the bat, you, you uh, don't want to be running in there throwing all these big punches, because even if you do get him hurt, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a fight over because the, the guy has a tremendous amount of heart. He possesses a great jab. He's got a good one, too. So I have to uh, be, uh, be in great shape. I've got to throw right hands. He, he, he's, obviously, he's been hit by right hands before. Uh, he hasn't been hit by Ken Lacusa's right hand, but you know, hopefully I'll get, be able to get it in. Well, Larry Holmes, whose comeback hit a high against Ray Mercer and Evander Holyfield, now has shifted gears, facing the likes of the Rocky Papalis and the Ken Lacustas, the long shot journeyman. I have to stay busy with the Ken Lacusta and the Rocky Papalis or with whoever, because nobody else is fighting me. At least these lower guys have guts enough to step in the ring with me. These heavyweights pretenders or contenders or whatever you want to call them don't want to do that on may 8th holmes will watch lennox lewis step in the ring against tony tucker lewis's people don't seem too interested in a potential matchup against holmes i don't need dan duva i don't need lou duva i don't need don king i don't need none of them you know uh, I can go on without a, without them with another promoter. They're not the only promoters in town. I can go with the, their manager. See, what happens with these guys, they want options. They want fight after fight after fight after fight. And they can't deal with me. And that's why I'm not in this man, because they can't deal with me because I'm not a good boy. On May 22nd, Holmes will watch Riddick Bowe step in the ring against journeyman Jesse Ferguson. His interest in this one perked up by Rock Newman, opening a crack in the door about a possible holmes bow matchup down the road. I think Rock Newman knows that Larry Holmes is, is going to be there, and I think the public, he knows the public is going to demand it eventually, and he knows if I keep fighting on USA, keep building up these ratings, and people will start demanding even more somebody's going to have to give. In the meantime, Holmes can't believe his eyes when he peers out on the heavyweight scene. With Bo and Ferguson, I think Ferguson makes a good sparring partner as he's been all them years. Just because he beat Ray Mercer, that don't make him a legitimate opponent because remember, I destroyed Ray Mercer. He was no good after I fought him. He retired for a year, didn't know where he was going, his head was here, his head was there. Then he came back and fought somebody on ESPN and barely beat that guy. And all of a sudden he fights a, a somebody's spy partner, spy partner beats him. And now the spy partner is in line for a title shot. Lennox Lewis is now fighting probably the best fighter out there in the, in the heavyweight division. And there is no more. You talk about the George Foreman. George got a good chance because he punches very well. But he's really a comic if you really look at it. I mean, he fools people with the hamburgers, the hot dogs and stuff, and smiles. And everybody who watches TV knows that smile ain't real. So therefore, you know, I, I, you know I'm happy for George because he's doing what he want to do. But Tommy Myers ain't really a part of anybody. Who did he ever fight? Carter Tooth Williams? Well, Carter Tooth Williams' best fight was 1985 when he fought Larry Holmes. And ever since then, he's been down here. So the man who reigned for seven years as the heavyweight champion looks at a Ken Lacusta as one of the means to the end. I feel that with my talent, with my experience, in spite of my age, I can be the heavyweight champion of the world again. And if I fought Lennox Lewis, I think that I will be heavyweight champion of the world again. Bo, I think it will be a harder fight, a tougher fight, but I don't think he has the experience. I think a lot of the trickery that I will use 
well, shows that I could be the heavyweight champion. Welcome to the beautiful Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, home of the spectacular Casino Magic. This bout is being sponsored by Casino Magic and Jimmy Wheeler and Big Wheel Promotions and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. The matchmaker for this bout is Bo Williford. This bout is sanctioned by the Mississippi Athletic Commissioner, the Honorable Billy Lyons Chairman. The judges for this bout are Chester Como, Freddie Steinwinder, and Martin Casino. The timekeeper, Jerry Taylor. Counting for the knockdowns, Ricky Taylor. The ringside position, Dr. Lance Barnes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event of the evening. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the heavyweight division. Your referee from Metairie, Louisiana, Elmo Adolph. Now introducing the principals, first in the red corner, wearing blue trunks. He weighed in at 223 pounds fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, with a professional record of 21 wins, 19 defeats and one draw, with 13 knockouts. Here is Ken LaCosta. His opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks, he weighed in at 242 pounds from Eastern Pennsylvania with a professional record of 56 wins and four defeats with 38 big knockouts. Here is the former heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes. gentlemen y'all receive your instructions in the dressing room look at me i want a good fight all night long okay a nice clean fight shake hands and come out fight. when larry holmes appears on the usa network there is a back and forth on agreeing on an opponent for him holmes shopping around for his ideal opponents i feel like sometimes we're the holmes shopping network <laughs> <laughs> and tonight Good. he came out with a Ken LaCousta cool. who uh, we saw a little while back in the comeback try of uh, George Foreman. Does uh, Ken LaCousta take anything as a learning experience from one former heavyweight champ to another? Yes, he takes a lot, but this will be a different kind of fight. I mean, let's face it, Larry Holmes is not the kind of fighter like a Jer uh, George Foreman. He's not a thunderous puncher who just rolls over his opponent and forces the knockout. There's a good left hook by LaCousta. Larry is more of a patient fighter. He boxes around, he uses his movement, he lulls his opponent into this false sense of security, and then he nails him. And Larry's got power, but it usually doesn't come early in a fight. Usually it's late. The comeback is now two years old after the three years off following the Mike Tyson fight. It started in April of 1991 with a first round stoppage over Tim Anderson. It's now gone nine fights, eight wins, the one defeat at the hands of uh, Evander Holyfield for the heavyweight uh, championship. And quite frankly, uh, Holmes in his last fight against Rocky Papelli, who certainly did not bring in as much experience as Ken LaCousta does, uh, Holmes seemed to be bouncing around on his toes uh, more active than he has uh, most of the time in this comeback. And more of a left jab from him. You know, in that in that fight with Papelli, he was ripping that left jab, ripping his opponents to pieces. That left jab, bringing it from underneath, down by his leg and up, and the, the jab that he used to have as a heavyweight champion. So a just, jab that we did not see in his first comeback. Remember when he fought Ray Mercer? Stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, stood laid in the corner. And there is the jab of uh, Holmes standing now right the center of the ring and that has been his best asset throughout his career i mean when he was the heavyweight champion of the world he used that 
left jab to, to beat a lot of good fighters. Holmes against the Lacustas and the Capellis now playing a little. He is uh, no fear right now in the ring, fully confident. But he's got to watch out for that right. That's the one that caught George Foreman if he's going to play around too much. But Larry Holmes right now staying in the light without getting into too much danger, trying to put the pressure on the fighters above and the champions to try to coerce a fight somewhere down the road, especially now with two titles out there. But at 43, the clock certainly is ticking on the Larry Holmes. Coming down to the final 10 seconds. And he prefers to fight Lennox Lewis. He loves that kind of style. He knows Lewis is a hard puncher, but he thinks that he has enough to beat him and take his title. Casino Magic, and you're watching on USA's Tuesday Night Fights, the former heavyweight champion, Larry Holmes. Good fight like fans around here. Their boxing is uh, well developed here, especially the amateur level. And they are joined the Larry Holmes. Has, has been home sweet Holmes for uh, Larry. He's fought several of his fights now here. He turned pro in 1973. March of 73, so he is uh, now into his 20th year since that date against Rodell Dupree, in which Holmes won a four-rounder and cashed a check for $63. Amazing how life goes in cycles because that's about what he's getting paid here tonight. Just kidding. Ken Lacusta, some of the bright spots that he has circled on uh, his fight by fight. He is the former Canadian heavyweight champion. He won it twice, once against Conroy Nelson, the other time against Tony Morrison. But Ken Lacusta looks at his record and says, uh, I went 10 rounds with Trevor Burbick. I went 12 rounds with Willie DeWitt. Into the seventh round before Mike, he was stopped by Mike, Michael step Dokes. Back, step back. Went the distance six-round fight with Tommy Morrison. He's also taken out in three by Foreman, a couple of rounds by Pierre Cota. He was knocked out in one by uh, Razor Ruddock. But uh, he has stepped in uh, against some of the big names in the heavyweight division. But, you know, what could you say? Guys, 21 and 19. When you're 21 and 19 and still in the game, you're no longer chasing the dream. But you have to give him a lot of credit. At a time when fighters don't face them, one another, he takes on anybody. Said, though, that he has no dreams of being the heavyweight champion. However, he wants to have a, he has a dream about pulling off a surprise, perhaps tonight against Larry Holmes. I don't know. Uh, said he never wants to face Tommy Morrison, who you talked about, and George Foreman again said, those are the two hardest punchers that I've ever been in the ring with. A couple of good ones. Well, Larry Holmes also very calculated, obviously, here in his last couple of opponents, but uh, Larry wants the tailor-made uh, guy, not only in these kind of fights, but even in the higher echelon fights. He thought Bray Mercer was made to order for him, and he was exactly correct. He didn't feel there was a danger in Evander Holyfield. He'd take Lewis, but figures Bo would give him problems. You know, if Tyson came out, he'd never have any desire to step back in the ring with Mike Tyson. Closing seconds in round number two. We pause for this word from our local cable systems.
So get down to your Hyundai dealer right now, because these price-to-go Elantras are disappearing fast. Welcome to Ringside, USA's Tuesday Night Fights. Round number three, and Kenny LaCousta gets by his what has been fatal round. He has uh, been stopped on 13 occasions. He has 13 knockouts, but the second round is the round he has gone down five times, or at least stopped. He's never been counted out of a fight, so he gets past there. Larry Holmes flicking out the jab. Fight phone is in operation here tonight. Uh, we're trying to get your evaluation. If you think Larry Holmes should still be fighting and uh, given another title shot, there is the number to call. If you you don't think he should get another title fight. 900-370-3161. Larry Holmes uh, giving an impassionate expression of his desire to continue to fight and uh, why he should. Uh, not taking the heavyweight the division very seriously saying that the guys on top uh, in the top 10 he said he'll fight anybody in the top 10 but they don't want to fight him it's a question of what would they gain the garcias the morrisons the moors in, in fighting a lot of homes is that the question or would they rather stay away from homes uh, fearing him still at this point also something else that's a uh, big factor out is monetarily how you put a fight like that together Holmes would to face someone in the top 10 he would certainly want he big could dollars he got a million dollars when right. he fought Ray Mercer plus he he could always say these guys don't want to fight me but when it comes down to it can can then say well they're not offering me enough money exactly financially they have to be able to sell a fight like that Larry's that's why it's all about appearance he is certainly setting up the right hand and you talk about appearance Larry Holmes started his comeback at 236 pounds. He now weighs 242. Now, for the Mercer and Holyfield fights, when he got serious, he got down to 233. Good combination by Ken Lacusta. He was on the scale, but he had all of his clothes on when he weighed 242. He says about 231 he weighed. Both fighters, in fact, said the scale here in Mississippi is heavy. I know you try to pick it up to put it right on that uh, platform. A heavy seven. scale, yes. You are, you are on those one-liners tonight. Kim Lacoste is hands down by his waist. Lacoste says he wants to hear it from the crowd. Says he's got to mix it up, give different angles, move around. That's not the way to mix it up with a Larry Holmes. No. This is a man with a superior jab. You have to rob him of that jab. You have to take that away first, and then you'll be able to work your combination. He is a very smart fighter. Knows the ring. Under the big top tonight. And uh, it is a festive atmosphere here at Casino Magic. Larry Holmes turning it up. There is the big right, the pursuer. There is no question that Larry Holmes' last few fights have uh, certainly picked up his activity ever since the Mercer fight. He has taken him four or five uh, fights to get back into the rhythm. And at 43, brings that vast experience and what he thinks is uh, still enough skills to earn uh, another title fight, and he wants uh, he wants Lennox Lewis. Well, what do you what do you think of a Lewis Holmes matchup? Well, he is certainly marketable. I mean, a former heavyweight champion of the world, he's got a winning streak you know, going. So he's you know, he's a uh, and he, he's smart about boxing. He knows the fight game. So. I think he's certainly marketable, and it's all, like I said, it's about appearance. It's about how many people will watch him fight, pay to watch him fight for heavyweight championship of the world. I don't know if uh, Larry, if he enjoys these fights as much as he enjoys still being a fighter again. He's in the spotlight, something to do in training, uh, maybe a very light regimen, especially for this uh, fight, uh, but the money, the talk about wanting a championship, and after a seven-year reign in which he was never really taken into the hearts of the fans, in those last few fights, he's hearing the crowd chant his name. 
in the win over uh, Mercer. And uh, going the distance in the title with Holyfield. I think Larry has uh, become uh, addicted to, once again to, to being a heavyweight uh, fighter, heavyweight uh, contender. Although he is not uh, ranked uh, at this moment in the top ten. He was the last time we saw him by the WBC, ranked eighth or ninth. Uh, but uh, I understand he has not paid his sanctioning fees yep. from the Holyfield fight. So, oops, <laughs> mysteriously has slipped out of the top ten. Strange how that can happen. Lacusta just standing in front of Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes now is trying to pot shot. He said he's not going in this fight looking for an early KO. He says people are not getting their money's worth. He wants to show the science of boxing. He wants to block his opponent's punches while he lands his own. And he is showing the full extension of the 81-inch reach. Inside 10 seconds of the fourth round, it's scheduled for 10. Holmes, who brings it here, what to do with that left jab. He's trying to pull away from it. When you do that against a fighter like Holmes, he just simply extends it. This guy's having a good time. He's ready to dance. Larry Holmes, 56 wins, four defeats. His losses at the hands of Michael Spinks twice, Tyson and Holyfield in his uh, two different comebacks. He has been down only three times in his career. Three fighters. Throw that out as a little trivia. Who knocked uh, Larry Holmes down in the career? Well, you know, one of them is Tyson. That's the only fight he was stopped. But the other two fighters that had him down were Ronaldo Snipes and Ernie Shavers. And that goes back a while. And that's back during the time when he ruled the heavyweight championship of the world. He was the man who fought everybody. Wins over Weaver, Shavers, Trevor Burbick, Ali, Leon Spinks, Ronaldo Slice, Jerry Cooney, Tim Witherspoon, Bone Crusher Smith, Marvis Frazier. Won the title in June of 78 against Ken Norton. And ducked no one. And our records show us that oh, good right hand. There he is setting up that right hand, going to the jab of the body oh, again. There it is again. And now piling it on is Larry Holmes. Our records show that he weighed in at 209 pounds against Ken Norton in 70. Well, that's 15 years ago. So Lacusta taking the shots here on the fifth. He has shown a little offense at this point, just unable to get in the jab of uh, Larry Holmes. Lacusta at the age of 37 from Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, off balance. That was a push. Left-handed push from Holmes. I think Larry took a fan seriously the last fight when they said, hey, why don't you fight someone your own age? We, could, we couldn't put Holmes and Foreman together. We couldn't coax Ernie Shavers out of retirement. So the next best thing, Kenny Lacusta at the age of 37. But uh, certainly a uh, game fighter who has stepped in with uh, most of the names in the heavyweight uh, division. Stepped in and stepped out. <laughs> Fifth round action and is scheduled for 10. Larry Holmes uh, getting a glorified uh, sparring session here against Kenny Lacusta. And uh, we will pause for these words from our local affiliates. Welcome back to USA's Tuesday Night Fights. Larry Holmes, the former heavyweight champ at the age of 43, on his toes as he steps into the ring for the second portion of this fight. On his toes, but he is noticeably tired in this fight. You know, when we saw him against Rocky Propelli, he looked impressive. He went out, he did his, his job, stuck the jab out, and put the punches together. He cut his opponent. And this fight, he's taking his time. Well, 
Has Larry Holmes convinced fans that yes, indeed, he should be given another title shot? If you are convinced, there's a number to call. If you don't think that at the age of 43, and after getting a title fight uh, in this comeback, he is uh, worthy of another one. You saw the number there. 95 cents a call. USA's proceeds go to the U.S. Olympic boxing team. We'll have the tabulations for you after tonight's fight. Look, Jeb, Larry just wants Lacusa to come in just a little bit, just more in the reach. Larry Holmes, who said guys like Garcia, Moore, Morrison, you could put them in a bag, shake them up, pull one out, and I could beat any of them. Big bag. <laughs> you could shake it. I can't quite shake that big bag. Well, we'll hear what Michael Moore has to say about that. Best punch in a couple of weeks. And Lacusa. Overhand right, and he set that up with a, with a left jab. Lacusta says, hey, you could call me opponent, but I could punch, I could turn a fight with one shot. When he nailed George Foreman, and then in turn was nailed and stopped in the next round, the third round, he was talking about Foreman and said, with George, you know where the punches are coming from, so you can brace yourself. But unfortunately for Lacusta, he knew where it was coming, but he couldn't get out of the way to brace himself. Uh, with Holmes, he knows he's the craftier fighter. And it's not a question of bracing for the power. It's keeping away from any of these shots. Holmes is looking for the big right, and you can see the damage he's doing under the left eye of Lacusta. Yeah, that is uh, some swelling that Ken had coming into this fight, but he has even more now that Larry's been working on it. Referee Elmo Adolf has been asking the fighters not to talk. Larry is talking to Kenny now, something that he perhaps picked up from Muhammad Ali, who used to talk to his opponent. Try to psych them out. McCain has a great new pizza snack. They call it Pizza Pockets. McCain! Pizza Pockets. The great pizza taste will keep you coming back. McCain! Pizza Pockets. Pizza perfection in a crust that's baked, not fried. So there's no leaks, no mess. Just taste. All taste and nothing but. McCain! Pizza Pockets. No leaks, no mess. Just pizza perfection. Seventh round, uh, Larry Holmes now, the lateral movement. Trying to corner Ken Lacusta. Unconventional would probably be the conventional way to describe Lacusta. No amateur fights. He actually uh, was a kickboxer. Number one in the world at one point. Also uh, fought as a tough man. So no amateur fights, 40 professional fights, uh, nearly split down the middle. 21 victories, 19 defeats. Stop. So he's undefeated as a tough man. He is definitely tough. Standing in there. He's taking a look at the wraps. You know, as these fighters sweat, that sweat goes underneath these, this tape and pulls it loose. In the amateurs, they have a, a great little piece of... of Velcro that they stick over that to keep that tape from coming loose so you don't have a time to stop. However, in the professionals, it's a good time for the referee to take a look at a fighter. A good stopping point. I got to work on the tape. But while he's working on the tape, he's also taking a look into his eyes, seeing if the fighter's okay, seeing if he's responding to questions. Last June, uh, Larry Holmes, courageous effort against Evander Holyfield going to uh, 12 rounds uh, for the title. At that time, you start thinking about guys in their 40s in other sports and how they stack up. Guys, of course, uh, Nolan Ryan uh, sits atop them all and the effectiveness he has had. Gordy Howe uh, in hockey and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played into his 40s in basketball. But in a matchup like this, and Holmes knows it himself, going up against a, a Lacusta, it's not Larry Holmes in the element of fighting the best and still at this age handling himself so well. It's like a Nolan Ryan pitching to a college freshman team or 
Gordy Howe against a high school club, Jabbar against a Division Three team. I mean, that's what you're seeing tonight. And Holmes knows it. He just says, I'm staying busy. I just want to make sure they know I'm still around. Yeah, and he, knows knows that uh, he could get to a different level for the right price. Yeah, and he's still waiting for that big Rocky story for him. I mean, at this point in his career, he's waiting to get the phone call late at night that they need somebody to fill in for a world title fight that one of the fighters had pulled out. You know, you would think he makes more sense for Lennox Lewis than a Riddick Bowe, but it's uh, ironic that when you hear from uh, both corners, as we saw early tonight, that the Riddick Bowe camp says, uh, well, we'll leave the door open, and the Lennox Lewis camp says we really have uh, no interest. Well, he, he's also... Uh, broken the code of silence in boxing. He's had bad words about some of the big powerful promoters in this sport, and that sometimes can be terrible for your boxing career. You can never get the big break, so just sit back and wait for you to get too old. And you know what? That's what he's saying, and he's right about that. And if, if you break that code of silence now, promoters don't want to touch you. Other fighters don't want to face you because you're, you're a good fighter, and now cut opening up underneath that left eye you talked about the swelling earlier in this fight it finally burst a diet section is that okay yeah, yeah, that's it that's it that's it that's it Keep steady pressure on that during the whole. Yeah, the whole round. Yeah, sure. Just your eye. Just your eye. Just your eye. I'm gonna call the fight. Okay. Put that press on that lower yeah. part because it's yeah. gonna start swelling up even more. How you feeling? Uh -huh. Okay. Because he's got a real good jab. Uh, I know. Don't be peekaboo and just keep a steady pressure on. No, that's it. I can't go anymore. I can't see very good. Yeah, that's yeah. I can't see very good. I know. <sighs> I'm going to the fight. Fight over. I got you. Right. Okay. Ken Lacusta said he has had enough. The crowd unhappy, but you see the damage under the eye of Ken Lacusta as he was just being jabbed and jabbed and jabbed and dissected by Larry Holmes who did uh, exactly what he had to against a standing target this is how it ended after seven rounds you see the damage under the eye of uh, Ken Lacusta who rolled the dice and came up snake eyes 61st fight in his professional career and his 57th win Larry Holmes knew he had a man made to order in front of him, and he did uh, what he had to do. Ten, Ken Lacusta could say, well, I went seven rounds with Larry Holmes, but uh, never really putting any kind of a pressure or concern on the former heavyweight champion. And uh, we are ready now for the announcement. Let's go up to our ring announcer, Rip Poulos. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout was stopped at the end of the seventh round through advice from the challenger's corner. And the winner, by retirement, Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes never had a loss for words. And when we return, uh, the ex-champ will join us here at ringside after this victory over Ken Lacusta. Larry Holmes, uh, the winner, on a TKO. Uh, now back to Casino Magic, USA's Tuesday night fights, and uh, Larry Holmes uh, puts up victory number 57, stopping Ken Lacusta in the uh, seventh round. And Larry, uh, you said even before the fight, these are uh, kind of uh, means to uh, reach an end. Uh, just your feeling on uh, what these seven rounds uh, meant to you. Well, they was good. You know, I only had two weeks really to prepare from the last fight. I was in California in the court for two weeks, fighting a battle in the courts, and those are the kind of battles nobody never win. But, uh, you know, I feel okay. I was sluggish. I didn't feel strong and as sharp as I would have been if I'd have continued to fight, you know, and stopped taking any days off and training. But nevertheless, you know, I, I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish, and 
we'll look at it and see what's next. Well, we know that you want to get a heavyweight championship shot. Do you think tonight helped you or hurt you, this exposure? Maybe it helped me if I didn't look yeah. bad because these guys are fighting guys who are not looking good. Uh, you know, Marlon Turkins in here at the Casino Magic with Big Wheel Promotions told me today that they're willing to put up any amount of money, a reasonable amount of money for me to come here to fight a world champion. So even though a top contender, so all them no fighting contenders out there like Alex Garcia and Tommy Morris and the George Foreman, which they signed, the Riddick Bowe and Lennox Lewis, you know, we're ready to do it. All we need is a top contender to get in the ring and beat me up, and then if they do that, we know it's time for Larry Holmes to get out of the ring then. Larry, the clock is certainly ticking for you at the age of 43. Do you have a timetable where you would uh, wave the white flag as far as a championship fight? Oh, yeah. If I can't sign a title fight by June, USA will have my last fight on May 18th. And that will be goodbye for boxing. Boxing been good. Uh, I can't say that about the promoters out there, but boxing has been good in general. And now that I found two people in Marlon Turkison and Jimmy Will, Big Will Promoter Motion has come back to back me, I got a chance. But these guys are shying away from these guys because they're taking guys like Ferguson, which you can't fight. Nobody knows Lennox Lewis. Nobody knows Tucker. So who they should fight? They should at least fight a guy that people can relate with. And I think the people know that I can fight. In here, it was extra, extra hot today in this, this tent, 85, 90 degrees, and only have two weeks to train. You know, I didn't do what I wanted to do, but I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. You played your interview about why you're fighting this fight, and you understand exactly what this fight is all about. You're not getting too excited. But the one thing I have to ask you about this is, is the perception to the fans of seeing a former heavyweight champion against a guy who's probably not ranked in the top of 50, a question of dignity, do you see this as affecting the, the, the fans' perception? And, and we will show some of the results we had of our fight phone tonight and whether the fans think that you should continue on and fight a world title. Let me have your answer, and then we'll show you the results. Well, first of all, you know, I'm going to fight for me as long as I want to fight for it. I think the people in this arena here show that they're out here, they're supporting me. Uh, my ratings on USA show that people want to see Larry Holmes fight. It's just these promoters out here that can't dictate to Larry Holmes or don't want Larry Holmes to fight because... I'm not hungry, I'm not broke, I'm not begging for any money. I'm just fighting because I want to fight. I feel that I neglected the public when I fought Evander Holyfield because I suffered an uh, eye problem. But that problem's been solved. And I think now, now that all the lawsuits are behind me, I can get on the right track and concentrate on what I got to concentrate on. But nevertheless, these top contenders or, or pretenders out there, Sean, you know, they're not calling my number. They're pulling everybody's number. They talked about Ray Mercer getting rid of Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes came out and beat Ray Mercer. He retired Ray Mercer. Then he came out and beat a guy that nobody heard of. Then he fought a spy partner, Jesse Ferguson. And Jesse Ferguson is getting the title shot. And we know that Jesse Ferguson is only a sparring partner. You know, we made a mistake. We should have put Larry's home number up there for somebody to call. All right, Larry, let's take a look at uh, the tabulations. These are not the final tabulations. We still have some West Coast... Uh, calls coming in but at this point running very close uh, fans saying yes uh, 51 percent but 49 percent saying it's time to uh, hang them up well those 49 percent are my real fans <laughs> that cares a whole lot about me and they don't want me to get hurt because they don't think i can do it the 51 percent of the people knows i can do it they saying go get it larry home if that's what you want to do go do it they're saying the same thing my wife is saying, my kids are saying, my friends and family are saying, go get them, Larry. Do I hear it? Go get them, Larry. Go ahead, go get them, Larry. Larry, Larry. Larry. Larry Holmes obviously feeling that the glass is half full. Larry Holmes with a victory tonight here at Casino Magic.